Okay, hello, it's, uh, it's me again, and we're looking here at a case where we have a block sitting on top of a plane. And, and um, what we want to know is if this block happens to slip at about uh, 30 degrees, what is the coefficient of static friction? Okay, so, and we know that when this tilts up at 30 degrees, it just begins to slip. And the question is, what is the coefficient of uh, static friction? The force that friction pro that produces um, in a static case is proportional to the, the uh, weight of the object. And the proportionality constant that we give it is something called the coefficient of static fr friction. And I'm using this n to represent the weight or the uh, force normal to the frictional surface. R usually when we write this equation, what's presumed is uh, this kind of setup where you have a, um, in the free body diagram, you're going to draw a uh, the force due to gravity, which is equal to the weight of the object. And you're going to draw um, the force that is counteracting that or reacting to that force of gravity, the normal force, um, opposite to that. And what we ask ourselves is, in this case, well, what is the frictional force in this case? And um, Oftentimes we don't really say this, but what's implied is this is actually a maximum value. That uh, when this is just sitting here like this and I don't have any forces in this direction, well, I'm going to call that, I'll give myself a, a system here, reference frame. Um, I'm going to call this the x direction. If there's no force in the x direction, then there's no counter force or reactive force of friction in the x direction. So in this case where there's no um, force, there's no friction. Uh, the friction comes into play when we apply a force and the friction counteracts the force that we're applying. And the maximum value that that can have is given or at least we model it through this particular equation. So we know it's proportional to the uh, reactive force that is perpendicular to the, the uh, surface. So if we go over here, we see that, well, this is going to just slip at 30. So what we know by this phrase, just slips, we know that the force uh, is its maximum. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the frictional force. So we know that in that um, what's happening here, when it just slips, is that the force of friction is a max. And we know that that max is given by this um, model or this equation, F frictional max is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Well. In this case, what do we have uh, for a normal force? Well, we know that the weight acting on this object still acts downward towards the center of the Earth. So we can put that force there, force of gravity or the weight. And we know that that happens to be 20 Newtons. And um, because we have this inclined plane, we know that this force can be broken up into a force that is acting parallel to that surface, the component right here of this of this um, weight is acting parallel and then perpendicular to that surface. Those are the two components of this weight. And we know this angle right here is 30 degrees. And uh, therefore, um, let's see, how do we do this triangle? I happen to know this one right here is also 30 degrees. Here is another triangle here. And I happen to know this one is uh, 90. So if this is 30, this is 60 here. Since this is 60, I know since this is a 90 degree that this is going to be 30. Okay, so now I know that that's 30. What I know is this component that is parallel to the surface is going to be uh, this is going to be sine of 30 times this 
force here, Fg, and I know that this one is going to be cosine of 30 times Fg. And the force that's reacting to that perpendicular force there to the surface is what we're calling the normal force. And we're going to find that by defining for ourselves a new reference system that is sort of parallel and perpendicular x prime, y prime to these surfaces. And we know that since this is not moving, it's just before it moves, we know the sum of the forces in the y uh, prime direction are equal to the sum of the forces in the x prime direction are equal to zero. So let's uh, go ahead and see if we can do that. So let's look at the um, we know in the the y prime direction, some of the forces in y prime equals uh, if this is up, we're going to call this normal n minus this minus um, this value right here, which we are calling cosine of 30 times fg, and that is equal to zero. And I'm just going to help myself out here a little bit. This is going to be my little. Uh, 30, 60, 2, 1, square root of 3. Here's my 30 degrees here. So we've got that n minus cosine of 30 square root of uh, 3 over 2 times uh, 20 is equal to 0, or n equals uh, 10 root 3. Okay. Now, um, this is at the condition where it's just slipping, so we know that f is the maximum value, or is given by this equation. So we know that in this direction, the, the frictional force here is equal, oh, oh, well, let's do it this way, the sum of x in the x prime direction is equal to zero, equals um, the force down, which is the weight in this, the component of weight in the direction parallel to the surface, is equal to sine 30 times um, 20 newtons. The, and the frictional force minus um, mu s times the normal force, 10 root 3. We know that's equal to 0. So that gives us, let's see, sine of 30 is 1 half. 1 half times 20 newtons minus mu s times 10 to the square root of 3. Uh, this is, becomes 10 newtons minus mu s times 10 to the square root of 3. We know this is equal to 0. That gives us uh, 10 newtons divided by 10 times the square root of 3 is equal to mu s. Did I do that right? Or 1 over the square root of 3 is equal to mu s.